This tool-assisted speedrun of Mario Golf Toadstool Tour Any% is the first of its kind, optimizing every hole far beyond human capability. A tool-assisted speedrun, or TAS, is just that, using an emulator and tools to map inputs on every frame and using save states to try until the perfect result is achieved, which equates to the run being completed as fast as feasibly possible. The Any% category of this game starts with an empty save file, meaning we have no access to unlockable characters, and it aims to complete the six tournaments to get to the credits. The empty save file existing already is important for this TAS, as it will provide the same optimal RNG seed every time while still complying with the Any% percent rules, since it skips the choice of creating the save file or not on the title screen. One last quick note before starting. The timer in the top right is there to show a comparison between TAS timing which is the frame count from power on to the final input, and RTA timing used for real-time speedruns, which includes lag loading every hole and after every reset. For this reason, RTA timing will be decently longer. The splits on the right will show up when each split would happen during a run, and the columns indicate how far ahead the TAS is over the current RTA world record with deltas and split times. So, with those things in mind, Please enjoy the 7 month long project with helpful commentary, or alternatively check the description for the no commentary version. Nintendo! <laughs> Pamela! <laughs> So the first thing on your mind is probably, why the Japanese version? JP saves time over NTSCU, solely because the former is a more polished version of the game, having far less loading time for certain menus. This will make for a roughly two and a half minute difference in the any percent run between versions. Oh, and you'll probably be seeing a lot of shots like this one. These are called dunks, which occur when the ball goes into the cup and hits the pin on the same frame. Before getting into routing and shot making, why choose this character? Character selection is based on a few factors, namely drive distance and height, swing animation, and putting animation. Bowser's the strongest character from the get-go in a fresh save file, and we can get his draw shot, or a curve from right to left, to go even further by straightening it out with an added left impact, or an added fade. He hits an average shot height, which is just enough to navigate some higher structures. And since it is lower than some other character shots, his shot height saves airtime overall compared to other candidates. Bowser also is tied for the fastest swing animation, and is the third fastest putter in the game. Fortunately, we won't be putting very often, as you may be able to tell based on the first few holes, so the slower putting trade-off won't be too significant. All around, he's a beast, and the route this Taz takes would be impossible without him. Routing each course out was challenging. Every course has a minimum score to win, which you need to at least tie to unlock the next one. These minimum scores are consistent, so it's possible to give up holes and take a triple par penalty to save time while still meeting the cutoff. You need to hit a shot once before giving up, which is why you saw a very short putt here. And triple par is what it sounds like. For example, this par 4 give up acted as if I took 12 strokes, which resulted in a score of plus 8. So, in order to know what holes to skip on a course, it's necessary to know what the best possible score is on every hole in the course. The next thing to consider is the length of those holes in tandem with elevation, as longer or downhill holes are better skips in general due to more airtime per shot on average. Different flag locations exist on every hole as well. In any percent, the first three courses have two possible pin locations per hole, while the latter three courses have three possible. This RNG can be manipulated, which I'll go over later on. The closest pin is usually the route preferred pin, but it depends on the layout of the hole. 
and the layout of each hole is also important to consider when making optimal shots that may save more time than a shorter hole would. To make optimal shots, we need to consider impact, course geometry, spins, hazards, and distance to the pin. We want to hit a top impact, or top of the ball model in the bottom right corner, as much as possible to reduce airtime a considerable amount while going nearly the same distance. This means the ball is actually traveling much faster to get to the same spot, since it isn't in the air as long. But, before we hit the shot, we need to take into account the geometry of the surface we'll be landing on. If the ball hits a downward slope, instead of bouncing up, it will bounce more forward or even downward, depending on steepness. The less roll, or distance the ball travels after landing, the sooner it will stop, saving more time. This idea is further complicated by adding spins. Four are possible. Top spin or super top spin, and backspin or super backspin. When you hit a shot with backspin in this game, the ball is actually spinning the opposite way than it normally would in the air, such that when it lands, it will have backward momentum. When you have this backward momentum present with a downslope landing, the ball will stick closer to the surface instead of bouncing away, making it a potentially faster shot overall. Hazards, such as bunkers or rough, also play into the theme of faster shots. When a ball lands in a bunker in this game, it does not bounce whatsoever under normal circumstances. Rough also works to reduce roll. However, landing in a hazard, or even a bad lie on the fairway, means the next shot's power will be reduced depending on the lie. This is why we need to consider distance to the pin on our second shot, because if it's decently far away, landing in a hazard may not be the best option. These bad lies serve another purpose though. When the pin does happen to be close enough to where a shot with a bad lie can still reach just fine, time is saved because the shot meter is reduced in length. That means that when the shot starts, the blue meter will only go up to where Mario is. So having a shorter meter means it takes less time to go to and from max power. This can save nearly an entire second in some cases, as hitting a wood with a bad light will further reduce the length of the meter. In RTA runs, combining all these factors is usually an incredibly difficult task, as frame-perfect consistency in a 60 frame per second game is not easy by any means. But in a Taz, all of these factors are taken into consideration in order to make the best theoretical route for each hole. Now that you know how the Taz was developed, let's switch the focus to statistics. Lakitu has a cutoff of plus 6, which was tied, and this Lakitu split ends up being a 6.15, which is over a minute faster than the best Lakitu split on record at 7.18. After the save dialog, immediately resetting skips the award ceremony, which saves 7 seconds each time. This run will use Bowser for the first four courses, and switch to Boo for the last two, once he is unlocked. For the second course, Cheap Cheap Falls. The cutoff is plus four. A total possible score of 39 under will allow one par five skip and three par four skips, for a final score of plus three. Hopefully you've been paying attention to some numbers here. This best drive is pretty neat. The point of this shot is to set a best drive on this hole, to avoid setting it again on a par 5, where a longer tee shot is needed. Each best drive costs 83 frames, so it's necessary to incorporate those into the route. If it were possible to albatross the 4th hole, a different set of skips would be possible to end with plus 4, but the 4th hole is too long to hit in 2 shots without a star character. The technique I'm using to get to the putter quickly is dubbed fast club switching. If you hold down, you'll switch clubs slowly, but you can switch a club every frame if you input down left and then down right repeatedly on the control stick. This also works for clubbing up.
step in. Nice, Eagle. Very well done. For cheap 9, this par 5 required one of the first instances of RNG manipulation outside of flag locations. The number by toad in the bottom right denotes shot distance variation, which is randomly pulled from a parameter based on the ball's lie. In the case of a tee shot and a good lie on fairway, you can have values of plus 1, minus 1, and 0. What this means is that before any other outside element affects the shot, 1% will be added or subtracted from the power of the shot, such that it will end up going roughly 1% further or shorter than with a value of 0. Every frame can have a different value of shot distance variation for the same power of shot. So, while it isn't visible, I actually wait 2 frames after panning the camera left here to get a shot with plus 1% and full power. This will allow me to play a lower shot than I would have been able to, and still squeeze out an albatross. The same happens on the second shot as well. Spending a couple frames to get plus 1% both times resulted in about half a second less airtime overall. This course also is the first one with wind, whereas Lakitu Cup has no wind, so it is possible to manipulate tailwind, but because Jeep has a max of 3 miles per hour, or 2 meters per second, it's generally not worth a few frames for a breeze. Jeep 12 has a special second shot. The angle of the ball hitting the pin has to be absolutely dead on for that top spin to go into the hole, and it requires camera manipulation with the smallest movements possible per frame. In the 255 by 255 grid for control stick values, every shift of 2, horizontally or vertically, until a certain magnitude, results in a different impact point or shift of the camera by X units. While panning the camera in a certain direction, Holding the direction for a few frames will start to increase the panning speed progressively. There is a short cooldown after releasing that direction as well before the panning speed resets. With this in mind, it becomes possible to manipulate the camera over a period of time until the perfect angle off the pin aligns with the perfect impact point of a shot, with topspin such that it goes in. Why is this faster than a dunk? Well. If you notice while the ball was spinning toward the cup, the chase cam was sped up by holding A. For some unknown reason, if you are able to speed the chase cam up before the ball goes in the hole, you will eliminate a variable lag that occurs before the celebration animation. This lag can range between a quarter second to over a second sometimes. So, this precise pin shot spin method comes in handy when possible on a flatter green and when a dunk incurs a lot of lag. The chase cam will only be sped up by holding A once the ball has stopped bouncing. This tip will come in handy later on in the test. With a split of 1255, this Taz is now almost exactly 3 minutes ahead of the current RTA any percent world record. Nintendo. 
Shifting Sands is the third tournament, with a cutoff of plus 3, and a max wind of 5 miles per hour or 3 meters per second. Since 39 under turns out to be the max score again in Sands, just like Cheat, one par 5 skip and three par 4 skips will result in plus 3 to tie the cutoff. I opted for rain on this hole because it was troublesome going uphill and getting a dunk. Unfortunately, rain causes 7 extra frames of loading time upon entering the hole, but it has some neat physics in the game that allow this dunk to be a smoother process. In particular, rain lowers the loft of a shot so it does not travel as high. It makes greens a coarser surface such that you need to putt harder to go the same distance and it also prevents fades and draws from curving back toward the normal line. This means that when Bowser's draw curves out to the right with a longer club like a wood, it won't follow the simulation line back to the left, which creates a straighter shot angle to the cup with good impact. Rain is actually much rarer in sands, which makes sense in a climatological manner. On Sands 8, I utilized speeding up the chase cam off of the rough to cut out some elevation for the second shot up to the green. Bowser is barely strong enough to take advantage of a shortcut on 11, but this allows for a much faster second shot dunk. Occasionally, I'll use miss hits to guide some shots. For a right-handed golfer, missing the sweet spot late is called a hook. The ball will bias to the left, having a lower loft and reduced distance. Missing the sweet spot early results in a slice, which means the shot will bias to the right, have a raised loft, and slightly reduced distance as well. This occurs because slicing the ball means you hit with the open face of the club. Very well. 
done. In. Oh, nice albatross. Very well done. New course unlocked. Leaving Sands at 1935 puts this Taz almost five minutes ahead of the RTA world record, which also had the best sand split time in a run by 12 seconds at that time. The fourth course, Blooper Bay, has a cutoff of plus two winds going up to 9 miles per hour, or 4 meters per second, and it introduces three possible pin locations per hole. It also has a new surface that acts as a potential hazard or help, called Fast Fairway. Essentially, Fast Fairway is a more volatile surface, so when the ball interacts with it, it will bounce, roll, and spin further. On the first hole, I take advantage of speeding up the chase cam using Fast Fairway to have a much faster shot than a dunk. This type of shot is only possible on holes that have fast fairway leading up to the green. Blooper 3 actually isn't a dunk. The ball hits the ground for one frame before going into the hole. I still don't know why this shot worked. On 5, I start taking advantage of lipping out of bunkers using topspin to get onto the fairway and have a shot to the green. This type of shot is generally 2-3 to three seconds faster than the same shot just bouncing on the fairway. Chip 
The 50th birdie badge in regular tournaments unlocks Boo, a hidden character, also known as Teresa in the Japanese version. Since unlockable characters automatically come with star form, this makes Boo the most powerful character we have access to at this point in the run. The star form of a character adds a varying amount of distance dependent on base power, while reducing impact and control stats, effectively making the character a glass cannon. Even though Boo has longer swing and putting animations, the added distance allows for multiple strokes to be saved, which is much faster as it leads to longer hole skips. For the rest of this course, I had to be very careful routing shots because of the best drive on hole 1. I could not find a shot on hole 1 that was less than a second slower than the one I went with so I opted to have a risky lower best drive in exchange for an incredibly fast shot. Some holes also start specific characters out with much lower clubs than a driver, because hazards are in the way of their tee shot. This will save additional frames when fast club switching down to the putter to skip the hole. Unfortunately, on hole 18, I had to take a best drive that was only a yard longer in order to albatross the hole. I believe this did not result in a net loss though, as Blooper 1 had such a fast tee shot that also had an optimal setup for the fast fairway spin onto the green. Bowser could barely achieve a score of 39 under on Blooper. So, 1 par 5, 2 par 4s, and 1 par 3 were skipped, ending with plus 1 at a time of 26.25, nearly 8 minutes ahead of the RTA record. Peach Castle Grounds is where this task really starts to shine. With a cutoff of plus 1, and max wind of 11 miles per hour, or 5 meters per second, a lot more becomes possible now that Star Boo is in play. Starting off quickly, some pipes in this course are warp pipes that transport the ball within the color-coordinated pair. This gets the ball close enough to the green to tap it in with a putt on the first hole. Peach 2 is probably the most important hole in this Taz, so pay close attention. I scroll the leaderboard and enter late to manipulate the front pin location with precise wind and no rain for this shot here micromanaging the camera and starting the shot on a frame that gives a very particular value of plus one for the shot to hit a tiny sliver of this mushroom's geometry that bounces it toward the green with regular topspin and a very, very slight high draw. No other spin would be even close to the green with this shot, and this only works because of the fast fairway leading up to the green. This hole-in-one here opened up the ability to skip a different set of holes while still meeting the cutoff, saving about 10 seconds overall. It took nearly 8 hours of attempts to pull this one shot off. Something interesting to note from that hole is how shot distance variation values are rounded up in display, 
but are not actually exactly plus one or minus one percent. They vary by incredibly small amounts, which can be just enough to change the trajectory of a shot like Peach 2. On the cake-shaped hole PCG-8, I purposely duff my tee shot with a high slice to get up the side of the mountain. A quick rough stop and easy shot to the green was the fastest way to finish this hole. You may be wondering if the ace on 2 is possible on other holes with mushrooms in the middle of the fairways, like hole 9. The rest of the holes are simply too long, and there is a huge uphill slope to the green that stops any rolling ball in its tracks before it can reach the cup. Hole 11 is so sharp of an incline from the tee box to the green that it was necessary to employ the perfect angle pin shot topspin. But this time I couldn't speed the chase cam up before the ball went in, so a slight amount of lag occurs. This loses less time than dunking with a higher iron on this hole though, because the ball would travel so much more slowly in the air. The rain also helped to tackle this pin location and get the desired angle off the pin to spin into the hole. Hole 13 uses pipes to get close enough for a putt into the cup, just like hole 1. Chipping. 14 is a horrible hole to play RTA because of the rock causing lots of roll time, so it would have been a good skip candidate especially since it starts boo with an approach wedge. But, since it is so far uphill, Taz can make two super quick shots and complete the hole nearly five seconds faster than the average par 4 on this course. Skipping two par 5s and two par 3s ties the cutoff of plus 1 with a time of 32 minutes and 48 seconds, 11 minutes and therefore an entire course ahead of human runners. The last course, Bowser Badlands, also starts off very uniquely. It has a cutoff of even, or 0, and max wind of 13 miles per hour or 6 meters per second. I wait about a half second to enter the course in order to manipulate RNG for front flag 
with a specific wind speed and angle. Hitting a unique value of minus 1% with a high fade power 3 wood and a 2 frame slice will bounce off the Bowser shaped rock at an angle that lands on the green. After this hole, there is one gimmick left to be seen, and is also the only helpful glitch of sorts that exists in the Taz. Three holes in Badlands have at least one pin location that has open space underneath the pin. For some reason, the hitbox of the cup extends directly downward to the edge of the map from its position on the green. When the ball interacts with this hitbox below the green, something funky happens. We call that the cup warp glitch. If positioned correctly, the ball will also hit the pin the frame that warps up to the green such that it dunks. This saves time because the second shot doesn't need to reach up to the green, so it can have a much worse lie and therefore shorter shot meter. Badlands will also have two best drives because the 16th hole is the longest one in the game and can just barely be done in two shots. So, I had to be careful to land on semi rough on the 13th to avoid having three best drives. Nice 
shut. Chip in. Oh, nice albatross. Very well done. After cup warping on the 17th, I wait about a second and a half to start my shot on the 18th with a very specific value of plus one, an incredibly precise camera angle to do this. It wasn't necessarily faster than a straight dunk into the hole, but the style points were most definitely worthwhile. The final input happens on closing out the last text box that causes the save dialogue to pop up. The TAS timing, 37 minutes, 55 seconds, 216 milliseconds. Factoring in RTA loading times and lag gives 39 minutes, 14 seconds, 590 milliseconds. The any percent RTA world record as of this video is 52 minutes, 47 seconds, and 602 milliseconds by me. So this TAS improves on that by 13 minutes and 33 seconds with the same timing method. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed this Taz of Mario Golf Toad's Dual Tour any percent. Have a great 2019.